Hello everyone, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. Over the last decade, the amount of data that systems and devices generate has increased significantly. Because of this increase, new technologies, roles and approaches to working with data are affecting data professionals. In many industries, data professionals want to understand better how these changes affect both their careers and their personal lives. To generate value, anyone working with data needs to understand how the data landscape has changed and how roles and technologies are evolving. You should be able to explain this shift to any stakeholder. Learn how to clearly describe the key factors that are driving the changes and how an organization can benefit from embracing the changes. So in today's module of Azure for Data Engineer, we would learn about the key factors that are driving changes in data generations, roles and technologies. Compare the difference between on-premise data technologies and cloud data technologies. Outline how the role of data professional is changing in organizations. And lastly, we will discuss some of the use cases that involve these changes. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. If you are over here for the very first time, please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. Data abundance. We all know that in our everyday life, we are dealing with data. Over the last 30 years, we have seen an exponential increase in the number of devices and software that generate data to meet current business and user needs. Business store, interpret, manage, transform, process, aggregate and report this data to interested parties. These parties include internal management, investors, business partners, regulators and consumers. Data consumers view the data on PCs, tablets and mobile devices that are either connected or disconnected. Consumers both generate and use the data. They do this in the workplace and during leisure time with social media applications. For example, you use Facebook or, or Twitter or YouTube or any other social media platform. No matter what we are doing or the internet or even in our daily life, we are generating one or another form of data. Business stakeholders use data to make business decisions. Consumers use data to make decisions such as what to buy. Thanks to AI, Azure Machine Learning can now both consume data and make decisions the way humans do. Data forms include text, stream, audio, video, and metadata. Data can be structured, unstructured, or aggregated. Now let's talk about the role of data engineer. Well, data engineer would be a person who would transform, load or extract the data from the different data sources. It's the job of a data engineer to manage that data. Data engineer would be the person who would be responsible basically to perform either ELT, that means extract, load and transform or ETL, extract, transform and load data processes. And they are the one who integrate the data. They are the one who manage the data into the data warehouse or in your databases. Microsoft Azure. It's a on-premise hybrid multi-cloud or at the edge create secure future ready cloud solutions by Microsoft. So whenever you need cloud provider, then you can hit out to Microsoft Azure or AWS or maybe Google Cloud Solution or any other. But Azure is the service provided by the Microsoft. Now let's discuss about on-premise versus cloud-based servers. Well, when traditional hardware and infrastructure components near the end of their life cycle, many organizations consider digital transformation projects. Here, we will consider options for those transformations. We will look at features of both on-premises and cloud environments. We will also cover the factors the business must consider as they explore each option. In on-premise environments, the very first comes the computing environment. 
on-premises environment require physical equipment to execute applications and services. These equipments include physical servers, network infrastructure, and storage. The equipment must have power, cooling, and periodic maintenance by qualified professionals. A server needs at least one operating system installed. It might need more than one operating system if the organization uses virtualization technology. So basically, any organization is going to need to have their own hardware, server, maintenance team, etc. Second comes the license. Of course, if you are running any operating system, then definitely the organization would require the license as well. Each operating system that's installed on a server might have its own license cost. Operating system and software licenses are typically sold per server or per client access license. As companies grow, licensing arrangements become more restrictive. Then it comes to the maintenance. As I discussed previously, in order to manage your on-premise servers, hardware, you need the maintenance team as well. On-premise systems require maintenance for the hardware, firmware, drivers, BIOS, operating system software, and antivirus software. Organizations try to reduce the cost of the maintenance where it makes sense. But unfortunately, on on-premises, you definitely need all of these. When it comes to scalability, in terms of scalability, for example, you need to increase your storage power, you need to increase your RAM memory, etc. Every time they have to buy the new storage, physically they have to install them and that costs a lot of time or sometimes a lot of processes too. That means you would have to wait for a certain time and it needs periodically maintenance as well. Now we will talk about the availability. Availability means for how long duration your server is up or down. So that comes under the availability. So there are the different standards like out of 365 days, how many days the servers were up, they were working, and what was the downtime, etc. High availability systems must be available most of the time. Service level agreement, which is SLAs, specify your organization's availability expectations. For on-premise services, the more uptime the SLA requires, the higher would be the cost. So this is very significant factor while deciding whether we should go for the on-premise or cloud solutions. We have already talked about the sport. Hundreds of vendors sell physical server hardware. This variety means server administrators might need to know how to use many different platforms. That means how to buy or how to connect with the different vendors. Because of the diverse skills required to administer, maintain, and support on-premise systems, organizations sometimes have a hard time finding server administrators to hire. Now we are going to talk about the multilingual support. In on-premise SQL server systems, multilingual support is difficult and expensive. That means if you are going to support more than one language for your on-premise services, one issue with multiple languages is the sorting order of text data. Different languages can sort text data differently. To address this issue, the SQL Server database administrator must install and configure the data's collection settings. But these settings can work only if the SQL database developers consider multilingual functionality when they are designing the system. Systems like this are complex to manage and maintain. And again, you need a very good team to support this one. Now we talk about total cost of ownership. The term total cost of ownership, which is also known as TCO, describes the final cost of owning a given technology. In on-premises systems, TCO includes hardware, software licensing, labor, which is installation, upgrades, or maintenance, or data center overhead, which comes like power, telecommunications, building, heating, and cooling. It's difficult to align on on-premise expenses with actual usage. Organizations buy servers that have extra capacity so they can accommodate future growth. A new purchase server will always have excess capacities that isn't used. When an on-premise server is at maximum capacity, even an incremental increase in resource demand will require the purchase of more hardware. So that's why this cost is going to be high. So now you can understand why the total cost of ownership is going to increase on on-premises. Previously, we didn't have any solution but to accept whatever cost is going to come. But now, as I explained to you previously, the data is increasing exponentially day by day, minutes by minute. So, 
we can consider the cloud-based servers and now we are going to discuss how these are going to be handled on cloud-based servers well basically when it comes to the cloud solutions cloud computing environments provide the physical and logical infrastructure to host services virtual servers intelligent application containers for their subscribers cloud solutions all the points that we just discussed like computing environment licensing maintenance scalability availability support multilingual support total cost of ownership everything is going to be handled by the service provider which would be in our case microsoft azure so they would take care of your computing environment licensing maintenance etc and it's very easy to get and to install for example if i just want to increase my storage it's going to be within seconds we can just click we can provision our hardware software everything and it's just a click survey and lastly i would like to discuss lift and shift which is only available in cloud based servers when moving to the cloud many customers migrate from physical or virtualized on-premise servers to Azure virtual machines. This strategy is known as lift and shift. Server administrators lift and shift an application from a physical environment to Azure virtual machines without re-architecting the application. The lift and shift strategy provides immediate benefits. These benefits include higher availability, lower operational cost, and availability to transfer workloads from one data center to another. The disadvantage is that the application can take advantage of many features available within Azure. Consider using the migration as an opportunity to perform your business practices by creating new version of your application and database. Now we are going to discuss the very important point and I'm sure you are going to be very interested in this one that is understand job responsibilities. Basically there are two points to consider. One is change data processes and second move from implementing to provisioning servers. What this means we used to follow approach of ETL that means extract then transform your data and then load into the respective destination. But with the cloud solution, it's going to be changed. We have to follow an alternative approach that is extract, then load, and after that we can perform the transformations. The data is immediately extracted, load into a large data repository such as Azure Cosmos DB or Azure Data Lake Storage. This change in process reduces the resources contention on source systems. Data engineers can begin transforming the data as soon as the load is complete. Now let's discuss about some of the use cases for the cloud. Azure can work for a range of industries including the web, healthcare and internet of things. Now let's explore how Azure can make a difference in these industries. Firstly we are going to talk about web. As a data engineer, use the Azure Cosmos DB multi-master replication model to create a data architecture that supports web and mobile applications. Thanks to Microsoft performance commitments, these applications can achieve a response time for less than 10 milliseconds anywhere in the world. By reducing the processing time for their websites, global organizations can increase customer satisfaction, which is great healthcare. In the healthcare industry, use Azure Data Bricks to accelerate big data analytics and AI solutions. Apply these technologies to gen some studies of pharmacy sales forecasting at a petabyte scale. Using Databricks features, you can set up your Spark environment in minutes and auto scale quickly and easily. Using Azure, you can collaborate with data scientists on shared projects and workspaces in a wide range of languages, including SQL, R, Scala, and Python. Because of native integration with Azure Active Directory and other Azure services, you can build diverse solution types. For example, build a modern data warehouse or a machine learning and real-time analytics solution. Lastly, we are going to discuss about IoT solutions. IoT or Internet of Things. Over the last couple of years, hundreds of thousands of devices have been produced to generate sensor data. These are known as IoT devices. Using technologies like Azure IoT Hub, you can design a data solution architecture that captures information from IoT devices so the information can be analyzed. 
So overall, in this module, we looked at how the world of data is evolving. We explored these changes affect data professionals. We also discussed the difference between on-premise and cloud solutions, and we provide a few use cases that apply cloud solutions. Now guys, I have three questions for you to check your knowledge. So please don't forget to answer them and comment in the comment section. I'll catch you in another video. If you would like to connect with us, you can connect with us and please don't forget to share this video, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos and updates.